Welcome back to a Mindful Mess podcast. Where we try our best to be mindful even if we're still a little bit of a mess, baby. And I'm Armin. I'm Cynthia. How's everyone doing? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm just feeling a little anxious, but it's going to come into play with the topic of conversation today. That is our topic of conversation. Where can they find us? Where can they find us? They can find us at a Mindful Mess podcast on Instagram and they can find us through um, Gmail at a mindful mess podcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. If you guys want to send us a little email or any little business inquiries, mm-hmm. that's where you can hit us up. Absolutely. That's where we're going to that's where we're going to find our business stuff. I do have one for my personal YouTube. I think you put yours. Yes. But just go to a mindful mess podcast. It'll be a lot easier there. Mm hmm. And don't forget, you can get the audio version wherever you get your podcast. That's right. Yes. You can watch the video version here on YouTube if you want to see Spencer, if you want to see our beautiful faces. But you can listen to the audio version wherever you listen to podcasts. Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, doesn't matter. iHeartRadio too? Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. There's some places I haven't even heard of where they get podcasts. (laughs) But if you listen there, thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. What are we talking about today? So today, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about anxiety anxiety i have anxiety right now same yes we why do you have anxiety well we mentioned earlier when we woke up you felt anxious yes. and you had your anxiety flare up mm-hmm. i felt fine but i meditated for eight minutes and instantly relieved my anxiety and you worked out yes yes mm-hmm. but now it's flaring back up because we're doing the podcast and stuff mm, which sorry. is fine which is, is it fine. good anxiety or is it bad anxiety or is it a little bit of both my anxiety is usually bad. It kind of consumes me. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Anxiety consumes me. And we're going to get into kind of the progression of our lives when it comes to anxiety, how we were as kids as we got older to now and how we've dealt with it. Yeah. And I think we should talk about opportunities we've missed because the opportunities that are missed that I've had recently. Mm. So that's Which a ones? little annoying. We'll talk about that soon. We'll talk about that okay. soon. Let's talk about when we were younger and how it affected us. Sure. How was your anxiety when you were younger? So when I was younger, I always just thought I was really shy. Like I was a really quiet kid in, in class, minding my business. Um, and I didn't realize that a lot of my actions and stuff were affected by my anxiety. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I always thought I was just shy. But in fact, I really did have anxiety. You know, I was scared to go up in the classroom to talk and present something mm-hmm. which i feel like there's there's definitely a difference between be just being nervous and being anxious but mm-hmm. now thinking back as an adult oh my god i re- had really bad anxiety when i was little mm-hmm. 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 i can see that reflected on me too i had really bad anxiety i was shy growing up too but my anxiety was pretty bad I can just think back to a million times in sitting in class and not raising my hand when I knew the answer. Yes. When I a thousand percent knew the answer, I still wouldn't raise my hand because there was a tiny chance that it wasn't the answer. It was like you make these scenarios in your head where it's like worst case scenario. Yep. When even if you got the answer wrong, you're going to be totally fine. Yep. That's the anxiety part. Yeah. But you started thinking like everybody's going to like make fun of you and they're going to think you're dumb. And that's just anxiety speaking. Exactly. It's Mm -hmm. those scenarios that you make. It's not just like oh i won't answer it it's like if i get it wrong they're gonna laugh at me they're gonna talk about it all day yeah they're gonna talk about it for the next week when in reality it really doesn't matter i can no longer come to the school yeah <laughs> right yeah, yeah yeah you're really our really good friend kim mentioned that yeah how how she used to feel that way mm-hmm. and how she's grown out of it now yeah. going to school as an adult and so i totally true. i totally like Feel her on that. Feel her on that. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I let my anxiety take over in so many aspects. Me too. Like, how was your anxiety with your family and friends? Did that affect those relationships? Um, I definitely felt feel like trying to make friends and stuff. Like, I was kind of anxious to try to make friends Mm -hmm. because I'm like, are they gonna like me? What are they gonna think about me? Um, and same with like same with my family as well. Mm -hmm. What about Mm you? That's what I was gonna say. Like talking to people, making new friends, making new connections as younger. I never did that. I kind of kept my circle close. I still do, but for different reasons now that I'm older. Mm -hmm. But I would let my anxiety take over all day when in school. Yeah. All day from like how I looked. Am I speaking okay? Am I fumbling my words? My anxiety would just take over and then it would get worse, obviously, because I'm trying to keep all these things in my head. I... We'll get into how we deal it with it now, but literally yesterday, 
at the store. If you're from the Midwest, it's called Meyer. <laughs> it's our Walmart. And but more bougie. I had anxiety the whole time because I thought people were staring at me. And I made up the scenario in my head that they were staring at me because my lips were so dry. And that consumed me for the whole 10 minutes I was there. That's so sad. When in fact, they no probably... No one cared. Yeah. No one noticed my lips. Right. I do the same thing, though, like... If I'm doing my makeup or something, I'm like, it looks so bad. Like, what are pe- what are people going to think? Mm-hmm. When in reality, like, I really don't give enough. But at the same time, I do, if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I think being ex- anxious, the feeling consumes you over not giving a fuck. Yeah. Over that kind of feeling. Mm-hmm. So growing up and being a child, how are there any opportunities that you wish you had taken but didn't because of anxiety oh for sure like i always wanted to try out for sports um but a lot of my friends didn't want to and so i always tried telling myself like just do it just do it but i didn't have like the guts to even ask my parents like i want to try out for this sport or show interest in like after school activities because i was so scared of making new friends i was so scared of what people were going to think about me Mm -hmm. if i was going to be good at the sport when in reality i just missed out on so many opportunities because of my anxiety absolutely again that's exactly how i feel because mm-hmm. there were so many sports and things i wanted to try but so didn't bad. because my anxiety with not having my friends involved in it yeah. doing it by myself my anxiety having to ask my parents to take me to practice take me to games when i know they're already busy yeah and i probably know their answer would have been no mm-hmm. so all that wrapped up together Mm -hmm. and then also my performance with that sport what if i didn't do well i made those scenarios in my head so i missed those chances and opportunities one thing i envy you for is doing your talent show because that's an opportunity i feel like i also missed for the four years i was in high school Mm -hmm. because i feel like i should have went for it and just did it just to do it i was gonna say doing the talent show so i wrapped at my senior uh, talent show and it was That's one ballsy. of like the proudest moments ever and especially for my dad because he was there um and that was definitely where i had to like not get in my head because i had actually asked a couple people if they wanted to do the talent show with me and like do the singing part of mm-hmm. singing part of the song and everyone kept saying no but deep down i'm like I'm, this is my last year of school i know that i need to just go for it and if i follow my face on stage like I'll probably cry, but at least I can say that I that I did it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's why I envy you for it. Mm-hmm. That was very ballsy to do it in front of your whole school. I was so scared. I, was, I almost didn't even go to the tryouts because I'm like, everyone's going to laugh at me. I'm going to mess up. But there's beauty in messing up and there's beauty in you gotta failing. Make like you have to fail in order to grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one thing we can talk about how to help with anxiety is putting yourself intentionally in uncomfortable situations so you can grow and become stronger to deal with that anxiety Mm -hmm. and not suppress it but overcome it and with my my high school being super massive the talent show was broken up into three performances Mm -hmm. so you basically had to do it i think you had to do it three times or you had to do it once in those three times and then it was voted either way there was so many people in the crowd and that's all i could replay in my head yeah And that's why I just chose that I couldn't do it. I just Mm -hmm. told myself there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. But at the same time, I really wanted to. And I could see myself being on a stage and doing something. Mm -hmm. Like right now, saying the podcast goes very well. I can see ourselves presenting, being on stage, talking to more people. We want future guests. And even though that gives me anxiety, I can see myself doing it. But Mm -hmm. before there was no no way way. absolutely not no way yeah absolutely um i forgot what i was gonna say never mind oh no i was gonna say i give you props though because remember when we went so for his birthday we went to this thing called tree runner Uh and it's basically what like an obstacle course and then what do you call it like the harness there's a word for that well, it's a har- it's an obstacle course high up in the trees. Yes. So tree runners. So you're connected to your waist to the zip line. The zip the whole line. Time. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. And so Armin was like so anxious, and he was like, "I'm." D-. There was like um, this one section where we couldn't get through, and 
we thought we were gonna fall mm-hmm. and we were we would have been fine because it like catches you or whatever but armin's like i'm done i'm done i'm not doing this and i could tell he was just like so anxious but we ended up doing it and then like after the fact we were so proud of ourselves so that we proud. did it because one of our biggest fears is heights I like for it. both of us mm-hmm. so i don't know why i thought that was a good idea for your birthday but it was still fun it was a lot of fun yeah it's, again putting yourself in uncomfortable situations yes. i would never do that by myself and we did it twice we did do it twice mm-hmm. that was the second time where we were it was just a medium difficulty mm-hmm. course, oh, but I was right. literally standing while you finished and I was saying, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. And then literally a kid and his family were <laughs> waiting behind me and I was like, no pressure. my anxiety took over again and I was like, I have to do it. Aww. I left that day with a bunch of bruises Same. and cuts because of like how hard I was gripping from the height. So I didn't fall. Sorry. What? I forgot you're gonna what I was make gonna fun of me again. No, no, I'm just no, kidding. No. Well, how are we with anxiety now? I missed a lot of opportunities when I was younger, mm-hmm. and even though I'm starting to get better at controlling it, I've still missed on opportunities now. Yeah. What opportunities do you feel you've missed out on? So there was one in particular I'm thinking of. This fashion designer that's from here locally, who is getting a lot of recognition around the world. Props to him. Shout out to him. What's he, his name? What's his Instagram? I'm not gonna remember it. Oh no! Okay, we'll foolish. put it. We'll put it right here. We'll put it right here. Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> there he is. He he's a really nice guy. He's awesome. Um, he asked me because he had a modeling thing mm-hmm. for his line, sure. and it was a local thing in Grand Rapids for modeling. Mm-hmm. So his pants or shirts or suits or whatever he made, and he wanted me to come audition. Yeah. So I could end up being on the show, possibly, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And he's super nice and super encouraging. And he really wanted me to do it. But I let my anxiety take over. So I didn't end up going. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I needed to buy like a. You can just leave it. I'm I'm like. You can just leave it. We're having technical difficulties. Okay, here we are. It's because it's an old drawer. Yeah. But I let my anxiety take over and I didn't buy a plain white tee. I I had skinny jeans and good shoes, but I made all these scenarios in my head that I didn't have time. I didn't do this. Yeah. It's on this day. We're doing this instead of planning to actually do it and planning everything else around it. So mm-hmm. I let my anxiety take over and I didn't do it. And I still regret it because it looked like a lot of fun from the pictures yeah. I saw. It probably would have been stressful, but it wouldn't have been a new experience. Even if it didn't go well or I didn't enjoy it, it's an experience that I could have had. And it's w- one of the ones I regret because of my anxiety and i believe with anxiety you almost have to a big reminder that i tell myself is what and something that you've taught me too is like what is the worst thing that can happen is they say no no i'm sorry you you don't fit like what we wanted and you're like okay and it's not like you're not gonna have other opportunities to do that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not for future and i ended up apologizing to him and i told him it was because of my anxiety and me worried about all these little things yeah and also, my body image goes into it. I was, I'm not 100% confident in my body and who I am. Mm-hmm. So being walking down the runway, knowing people are staring at me, went into it. But again, if I fell flat on my face, who cares, man? Yeah. Literally, who cares? Mm-hmm. But I let it consume me. Same. So then I didn't do it. So that's one in particular. Do you have one as you got older that you wish you have would have done? I can't think of anything in particular. The only thing that can come that comes to mind is um, really pushing myself to grow in like the beauty industry, like grow my YouTube channel. Right. Um, and that's something that I'm trying to do right now with makeup and stuff on TikTok and Instagram and stuff. But I feel like I always just I think self-doubt also goes hand in hand with anxiety because mm-hmm. I always doubted myself. Like if I was good enough, um, what are people going to think? People are going to make fun of me. I remember mm-hmm. doing youtube vid- or recording youtube videos when i was like 11 13 whatever i did it for a while and somebody went through all my videos and disliked every single video and it tore me down so bad because i doubted myself instead of looking at all the positives of that's what we do huh yeah like oh five people liked it but one person disliked it mm-hmm. and i just let it consume me um so i just always get anxiety if people are gonna like it when in fact like it doesn't really matter all that matters is how I feel about it. And it's makeup has become like a getaway for me now. 
and has helped with my depression and my anxiety mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i can i can tell that too yeah that you enjoy doing it again i do and doing it often too mm-hmm. not just like here and there yeah but that is frustrating having the anxiety of posting those videos that's why i overthink too does it look good does this look good do, do I, I look, look good, good? Yeah. do i have a little crust right here yeah. do i have to redo it yeah and it's funny because we're so vulnerable on this podcast and it's my favorite thing to do because we're vulnerable mm-hmm. it's annoying that my anxiety takes over in different parts of our content creating that i overthink it if we're Same. making a youtube video or a tiktok video a post whatever it might be i think you have so much um i don't know if it's i'm using the correct word empathy for when i do my videos you always just tell me like it looks amazing and I hype Sometimes you up. I wish you would do that for yourself. For myself, mm-hmm. yeah. I but don't same for me. Like I'm, I'm like, no, that looks good. Why are you overthinking it? But mm-hmm. then I do the exact same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then since I was younger, my anxiety is always shown through my nails. I've done nothing but bite my nails since I was a kid. Through anxiety and what, any pressure situation. What do you feel? What do you feel through like internally in like your body when you feel anxiety? Like what comes to mind? So thinking back to class, all the way up to college, this was all the way up to college, my anxiety, I would, my palms would get really sweaty, sticky, Mm -hmm. Um, I would bite my nails, I would have to use the bathroom. So those are the three main things Mm -hmm. that I constantly did. So in high school, I would bite my nails, my palms would get sweaty, I would start shaking my leg. Yeah. Well... I do this all the time. So that's like part of my constant anxiety Mm -hmm. is this helps me just like shake my leg. Yeah. And people notice it all the time too. They notice that anxiety. My parents notice when I use the bathroom before I go out to an event or something or with my friends, they can tell I'm having anxiety because I'm using the bathroom a bunch of times. You do that too. I never realized Mm -hmm. that, but you do that too when we go out, huh? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So my legs shake, my hands, biting my nails... That's always been a constant thing. Mm-hmm. My heart, my heart race, my heart starts to race. My heart for starts sure. racing. If yeah. I have to do a presentation or something, my voice starts to like break up and, and shake <laughs> if I'm doing a presentation. Yeah. So all of so I've been dealing with anxiety for so long, but you didn't even think about it. You just think you're shy or whatever. Right. And I don't. I'm not necessarily even sure where that comes from. I can't pinpoint where my anxiety even started. Maybe it started when I peed myself and I was embarrassed. Oh my god, I did too. Mm, I know. We talked about that when we were younger. We both peed ourselves. (laughs) I mean, honestly, like who didn't? True. Exactly. It doesn't. Again, doesn't matter. My parents brought me clothes and I was like fine. But I can't pinpoint exactly when it started. I just know I've always chewed my nails in every like stressful situation or leading up to something, and then also my hands. I know we talked about in couples therapy. How we felt a lot of pressure with our parents when translating. We did. So yeah. I feel like that maybe caused some anxiety because we were handling okay, yeah. adult situations when we were just children. Mm. But it just we just wanted to help our parents. That's deep. That's very true. I've never even thought of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've al- I, we were always super young and always trying to figure out how to translate for our, our adult parents for adult situations. Because they didn't speak English. Yeah. Work stuff. Doctors. Yes. Insurance. I feel like we learned that in such a young age. We did. Because we, we had, had to We kind of had to. Yeah. Our parents just, needed us in that way. Yep. Just because we knew English. Mm-hmm. Or also we're learning it in school as we were getting older. Yeah. Do you have little tendencies that you do when, when I you were growing English. up? Yeah. When I was growing up? Growing up and now. I still chew my nails. Definitely. I don't know. Is there anything like you can think of that I do? I know, like I said, I my heart starts racing. My mouth gets really dry. It feels like I have like a lump in my throat. Okay. Like when I swallow. There's definitely more, but I can't think of it right now. Well, I'm trying to think back. So I went out for the first time in a long time. Mm-hmm. I actually went out to the club for my best friend's birthday. Happy birthday, Abe. And Oh yeah, happy birthday. I'm sorry, I never said happy birthday. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> uh yeah, it was a really fun night. And I told myself before and during the whole time just to be myself. Like I kept repeating it to myself. Mm-hmm. So I didn't let my anxiety take over. And I'm gonna, I won't lie, going out l- on Friday was so much different. Friday night was so much different than any other time I've went out with my friends. And here is a big reason why. Why? Because I'm in a relationship. 
So usually when I went out with my friends, I'm always worried about my hair, my outfit, if I'm going to talk to girls, if I'm going to dance with girls, Mm -hmm. if people are going to come up to me and talk to me, if I'm going to like mingle or network. I did. I talked to some really cool people, but I wasn't worried about any girl at all. And Mm -hmm. that felt so freeing that my anxiety, I was literally just dancing, vibing with my friends and not worried about that. And that was one of the nicest things ever. Nicest things, knowing that. Loyal. Yes. Knowing that I love you to death and that I'm going to come home to you and like, yeah, not having to worry about anybody else really that was sweet. so good and then on the guy side i wasn't worried about how i was looking you we looking were fresh? like we were all wearing our suits compared yeah. to everyone else mm-hmm. i was just talking to guys shout out to jamal hill the ufc fighter he was also there he was super cool and the old me wouldn't have even talked to him but i was just having fun and talking to him mm-hmm. and vibing with him and the owner too of ambiance gr so that was one thing I noticed that was so freeing. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't have that's to worry growth. about anything. That's growth right there. I didn't have to worry about anything. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> because I love course. you to death. I and it was too. so nice not to worry about that. That's sweet. Because growing up, I was always so worried about how I was perceived by the opposite sex. Really? In school, high school, it always like took over my anxiety at a lot of times. I at think a lot of same times. here. Now that you mention it, I'm like... Yeah, I feel like I would always get, like, bullied by guys, boys, not even guys, children. Yeah. Especially when you go through puberty and your hormones start going and you get crushes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So then you're consumed by that and it worsens your anxiety. Yes. How you look, what you're saying. Yeah. A big thing for me was also acne. I would literally (gasps) gross, gross alert. I would pop my acne in the morning before i would go to school and it would return by the end of school and that gave me anxiety all day checking on it seeing if i can hide it mm. or things like that yeah so body image and that goes into play in my anxiety Same. but it was so freeing friday night to worry about nothing just to worry about having fun. having fun with my friends yes that was super nice mm-hmm. and i can tell that i am growing like you said yeah. and that that was a really good feeling and that's why no lie, after, I still feel so good that we went out as a group because we never hang out anymore and that he had so much fun. And that's something I'm trying to learn as an adult, too, is staying in those good feelings yeah, and, not just, and not just in the bad ones, too. Yeah. That was so awesome. And I think it's really important to also be around people who don't cause you anxiety. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. My because friends then don't. You, because then you'll feel... Like you're, anx- you won't have as much anxiety with someone who makes you feel safe and who makes you feel like you can be yourself. Being yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that way now compared to friends you have now compared to th- when you're younger? I re- I really do think so. I really do feel like I can un- unapologetically be myself without having to think. You mm-hmm. know, what are they gonna think about mm-hmm. me? Because I think that says so much more about that person than it says about me. Mm-hmm. If I be myself and that person doesn't accept me, like, fuck you. You're, I don't need you to be my friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And in our relationship, I feel so comfortable being with ourselves. you and being ourselves for the first time in any relationship I've been in. That that helps my, with Let my me anxiety. Cry. Don't Let cry, me ready don't to cry. cry. Don't cry, don't cry. And you help with my anxiety because of that, because I can be myself. You help with my anxiety. It takes over, though. Let's, let's also talk about anxieties with our families mm-hmm. now, because I still have it, and we argued about it not mm-hmm. too long ago. Yeah. Because we were... I was at, arguing all the time. I'm just kidding. We were at your parents' house, and my anxiety was taking over, mm-hmm. and I was overthinking, and I wasn't being myself like I can be, and I just sat there on my phone. And that's not okay. What do you think? What do you think affected you to be that way in that moment? Because there's been other times where you've been super open and like yourself. Myself. Yeah. Do you think it was because we hadn't seen my family in some time? I think that might have played into it. I'm also putting so much pressure on myself to learn Spanish. So I've been doing it every day and it frustrates me that I don't exactly know what you guys are talking about sometimes mm-hmm. on my own. I know I can just ask you, but yeah. on my own, that that plays into it. Same here. That plays into it. His parents speak Bosnian. His mom knows some English. She knows or, English pretty very English. well. Yeah, pretty well. Sorry, I meant your She's dad. She's fluent. 
your dad knows some English, but sometimes it's not super clear. So it makes me a little bit anxious. Like, well, what am I going to say? And I know I can ask you, but it does put like some pressure on me because I want to be able to have a conversation with them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I let it consume me and then it just got worse. And then I sat there on my phone, which mm-hmm. wasn't okay. Because it's such an easy getaway to just be on your phone. Yeah. Instead of facing the anxiety. Exactly. And kind of pinpointing, well, why am I feeling this way? What can I do differently right now so I don't feel this way? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm let's switch gears to how have we coped with it and how have we made it better i think we have made it better and being in our relationship together has made it better for me for sure Mm -hmm. how is are there things you have done to make your anxiety better um i think finding like acceptance like with who i am and then also something that i'm still trying to work on is really just accepting that in the moment i am anxious like I am just anxious. Like, my body in the moment is just anxious. Mm-hmm. Um, and also maybe, like, what factors, like, having a lot of caffeine sometimes make me more more anxious than I should be. Um, how about for you? There are techniques and things I do that help with my anxiety a lot. Mm-hmm. So, like meditating. I mentioned earlier, meditating. I only meditated for eight minutes. But that eight minutes was being present. And at peace. Which calmed me at mm-hmm. peace which set me up for my workout and the rest of the day. I, I feel a little anxious about the podcast and before the podcast, but it's nowhere near as bad as it can be, mm-hmm. like at your parents. So meditating helps me a lot. Journaling helps me a lot, just like in other aspects of our relationship and growth. I highly recommend um, journaling. I was about to say journaling. Yes. yes. And uh, the third one is breathing. Mm-hmm. So listening to a lot of Jay Shetty, and his podcast on purpose check it out highly really recommend good. his book thing like a monk i highly recommend he's talked about breathing techniques mm-hmm. and different ones that i've tried the one that works for me is um i don't want to say it wrong the the first the one that works the best for me is you inhale for four seconds through mm-hmm. your nose and you exhale for eight seconds out of your mouth and that slows down your heart rate mm-hmm. heart rate and calms you down I've used that a lot and that helps me a lot. I've also used the, I think it's the box me- method. Mm-hmm. So you inhale for four, you exhale for four, you inhale for four, exhale for four. And those breathing techniques help me so much just to slow your heart rate down and to calm you and to like put you a little bit more at ease mm-hmm. so you can tackle whatever you need to tackle. So breathing has helped me so much. I wish I had breathing techniques in school. Yeah, but you don't really think about that. No, then. no. I highly recommend I don't know if you do them or not. I don't usually, but I will say something huge that I also learned in therapy, which I brought it up before, is being mindful. Mm -hmm. Um, So something that my therapist taught me was pinpointing, and I'm not good at explaining, I apologize, but looking at something, like right now I see a picture of a cake, and the Mm -hmm. cake is pink. So in this moment right now, I can tell myself, I am here, I am present, I am here with the love of my life, I can see that picture right there. Because sometimes I get so much anxiety because what's to come and also because of the past. So just reminding myself that I'm in the moment right now. Mm-hmm. That's that's an important that's an important mm-hmm. piece that you mentioned is being present in the moment. Because sometimes why do you get the anxiety? It's usually contributed from your past experiences. You're feeling anxious because of that or like what's to come. Yeah. Those scenarios that you make Mm -hmm. are from the past Mm -hmm. or what's going to happen in the future when you don't know what's going to happen in the future. You Mm -hmm. can only focus on right now. Right now. So that's really important. I Mm -hmm. like that one. Thank you. Yes. Another one that helps me a lot, not just journaling, is also speaking how I'm feeling out loud when I'm walking Spencer by myself or walking outside that's or driving in my car i mm-hmm. told you sometimes i'll scream in my car yes to get to express and to get that out because I, I i'm not i'm very laid back so i don't scream or anything like that so i'm chill. very like you're so chill yeah. Mont- mellow so i'm so chill on the outside the exterior i'm very laid back but deep down i'm like you're a little crazy a little a little bit <laughs> that helps me a lot too is voicing how i'm feeling in the moment in the day and being present in those emotions so i can find ways to move on from them I that's think what i'm learning also with communicating when i feel really anxious is talking to you mm-hmm. even if it's like the dumbest thing like i could just be anxious because i feel like a failure in talking to him and 
explaining to him why I feel that way, Mm -hmm. which sometimes I don't even know why I feel anxious. But usually there's something like underneath the surface that's making me feel anxious, whether that was like a disagreement with a friend or Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like my makeup and that triggered me and it made me feel like insecure. So there's so many factors that can go into feeling anxious. And I think communicating to your partner is also really good because I find myself sometimes like throwing my anxiety onto you rather than communicating to you that I'm anxious if okay. that makes sense yeah 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 i've seen i see and i think I see same that. for you too yeah mm-hmm. absolutely instead of dealing with it in the moment and figuring out ways how to move on from it yeah. it's so easy to just like bottle it up and then that anxiety is shown like to your partner shove yeah, it or other you, people which makes it worse mm-hmm. you think our anxiety contributes to our fights other than oh like your parents and me being too much in my head do you think it does in other fights yes yeah Mm -hmm. like what so i feel like you get really anxious and in your head and then that gets that that affects you to shut down yeah and then for me i get so anxious that like you're gonna leave me or that you don't love me anymore then that's shown in anger and shown with outbursts yeah Mm -hmm. so definitely yeah i feel like you get anxious to the point where you think you need to leave me before I leave you. Oh my God. Like that's a very traumatic thing you've like gone through in your relationships that bubbles up. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens in our fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's both of our, not our favorite thing. It's just what happens in the moment, but it's just something I've noticed. Yeah. It's a, like, it's a trauma response mm-hmm. because you get just, your brain gets so accustomed to constantly dealing with that same thing how can it not you know affect your future relationships yep. but that's what we're trying to work so hard on and like i love that we're able to sit down and talk about that and try to figure out and i've mentioned this before like responding that way yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah well what a great episode yeah. uh, my anxiety has kind of cooled down Same, to be i'm honest. like i'm chilling like oh. chilling yeah. chilling it feels good to make these podcasts that's why mm-hmm there isn't anything else that i can mention on anxiety that i do i try to do breathing i do journaling meditating Mm -hmm. highly recommend all those three Mm -hmm. and then therapy of course yes if you think you shouldn't be in therapy you're probably wrong probably wrong it's not like you're a horrible person it's just like there's some things you don't know that fuck with you on a daily basis Mm -hmm. that you need to figure out to grow yeah you know what i'm saying should we do the love notes sure unless you have anything else to say sorry I don't think so. I think we really went in depth again. We went in. I love it. I don't know how long this podcast is. I'm very sorry. I think it's yeah. I think it's good. Yeah, Spencer is sleeping because we took him for a run. A run. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Before I even grab our this, dog has anxiety. He has anxiety. That's what I wanted to mention. He, he like animals have anxiety. Mm-hmm. If you watch like Caesar Milan, I know some people don't vibe with Caesar Milan, but he time and time again talks about getting their exercise yes letting them be free letting them be dogs Mm -hmm. so they're not building up that anxiety inside the house and we feel so bad during winter when we try to play with him because we can't take him for long walks or runs Mm -hmm. so his anxiety is bad like when we took him out he was losing his mind he was barking at people that were nowhere near us and then when I ran with him and we walked, he, was he didn't so care chill. about yeah, nothing. He, was so he didn't care about those same people later That on. is perfect that you bring that up because exercise can help anxiety so much. That's the, one of the biggest things. Yes, Duh. Yes. Working Anxi- out. Yeah. That has helped me so much. Like sometimes I'm really anxious and he'll be like, do you want to go to the gym with me? And I'm like, no. I'll even get anxiety like going to the gym. Mm-hmm. But then I know that I'm going to feel better afterwards. That's the thing. Because you burn all... It's almost like you burn that anxiety off. You know, it's funny. After the gym... You always feel like so much that was so good. I feel so good. I need to do that every day. Yeah. But it's the problem is 24 hours later, you don't feel that way. You feel like your anxiety is back and you don't want to go. Mm-hmm. It's it's that balance. Yep. It's a, it's yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that. Yeah. A, a wave, wave. We have to describe it because some people are listening. It's, it's a wave. wave. Y'all yeah. didn't see this. Y'all didn't see this We'd in audio speak. version. <laughs> yeah. Good thing you mentioned Spencer. I literally forgot. So... We have more in here because of the past week when we yes. wrote some for each other. Mm-hmm. But I also found more Aww. from in this drawer. So I added them. Perfect. Let's try to get like a bright color. Okay. Here, I'll get this orange. Yep. So we got our little bowl of love notes. Did you say we wanted to grab our own or just random ones? Just random. Is just fine. random yeah. ones. This is yours. 
Here you go. Thank you. I'll just do, I'll just do this one. Do okay. you want to go first? Sure, sure. You wrote this. Mm -hmm. You said cooking delicious chivape. Mm -hmm. Let's make it again, please. Aww. Chivape is a Bosnian dish, meat. Meat, bread. Onions, mm -hmm. bread, sour, sour cream. cream. That's good. Picture. I don't know if there'll be a picture. You have I'll to forget. put a picture. You have to. So I made it at home because we were starving. And it was pretty good. I won't lie. It was, it was pretty the good. first time you it made it. It wasn't Bosnia Express, but it was pretty good. What is Bosnia Express? It's a restaurant here in Grand Rapids. Bomb. It's a really Bussin. good Bosnian, delicious Bosnian food. Okay. Well, this is my sister's. Perfect. But I love it. So she put going to the pool and playing kickball. And she put Diana. Oh. So that's really sweet. Because in the summer, we usually... Um, spend a lot of time with family and stuff and we like to go to the pool and I, we also like to do like kickball with our whole family and that's always super fun kickball is so much fun yeah that's a, that's a, a great bonding experience it for really families is. go play kickball go play a sport together mm -hmm. it's so much fun because you, you can see who's competitive like me <laughs> i have to win even though it's just for fun <laughs> right it's still so much fun absolutely so we're gonna put these up mm -hmm. after we're finished here Again, check us out on Instagram at a mindfulness podcast, Gmail at a mindfulness podcast at gmail.com. We still haven't made a TikTok because I'm overthinking what video we need to post on it. <laughs> so and, we'll see. And we are back every single Monday. So don't forget, comment, like, share, let us know what you want to hear from us. And if you want to write a love note to someone else, put in the comments, DM us, email us. We'll write it, we'll mention you, and we'll put it on the wall. How's that? Did I get Perfect. everything? Perfect. Absolutely. You have anything else to say? I don't think so. Spencer, you got anything else to say? Nope. Nope. We love you guys. As always, we're super grateful and appreciate you. Keep on listening. Keep on downloading. We love you and be kind. Bye. Bye.